Air Hitam Forest Reserve, located at Puchong, Selangor, has been gazetted to Faculty of Forestry, University of Putra, Malaysia, to be an educational forest called as Sultan Idrisha Forest Education Center, SISFAC. There are a lot of resources in SISFAC, consists of flora and fauna, and the complexity of biodiversity allows SISFAC to develop two types of products adventure tourism and nature tourism. Objective First, recognizing SISFAC as an ecotourism based tourism center of international standard. Second, making SISFAC the only tourism center using green technology in Selangor. Third, making biodiversity and the uniqueness of local communities as well as cultural diversity as an attraction to domestic and foreign tourists. Adventure tourism in SISFAC consists of expanding the core product into actual and augmented products in order to meet tourist needs and wants. Core into actual product activities is suggested based on two criteria. First, the product should give less impact on the site by minimizing footprints. Wall climbing is proposed as this product involves facilities and less impact on natural resources. Second, Encourage the involvement of local community that will provide them with many benefits. This can be achieved by establishing a long-term partnership where local community will participate as staff members or even as a guide in zipline, abseiling, and canopy wall activities. On the other hand, derivation of augmented product from actual product is based on two criteria. First, the design of the product must be able to harmonize with the element in the site. For example, canopy camping is proposed to meet visitors' expectations, which are stargazing and to feel the nature during nighttime. Second, adaptable to the natural and cultural value of the site to be able to exist together. For example, a bouncy jumping for an adventurous people who need to improve their confidence level. Third, educate and influence visitors to appreciate and protect the natural resources. Activities such as canopy camping, marathon, barbecue, fish pedicle, and obstacle course with a time limit are suitable for students with low confidence and team building skills. Next, we will move to the nature tourism. Nature tourism consists more of the education and conservation elements. Therefore, the actual products suggested from the core products are based on two criteria. First, the products have high compatibility to the natural and cultural values where it allows both to exist together. The unique element of the resources is also highlighted as flagship species. Second, the products encourage the involvement of local community and provide many benefits to them in return. This involvement is required as they are more familiar with the place, not to mention their contribution in the economic sector. An examples of core products are volunteer program, wilderness program, nature education, and SISPAC historical area. In addition, actual products to augmented products consist of two criteria. First, the products will contribute to the protection and conservation of resources at the site. It will also contribute to the management of ecotourism sites that manage the resources. Second, the product should educate and influence the tourists to behave positively in regard of their conservation efforts. Influencing the tourists can be done in many ways, including effective interpretation of natural and cultural values. The products and activities are designed to encourage the tourists to appreciate and protect the nature. An example of augmented products are plogging, stargazing, and escape the wilderness. Zoning Zoning has important in ecotourism management and determine the optimal use of the area based on its affordability and environmental conservation. The zone is divided into three parts which correspond to the activities to be carried out without damaging the resource. They are active zones, semi-active zones and modern zones. So basically providing Zoning based on the program is needed as this can make this fact develop many strategies to maintain the infrastructure and control the cloud needs of visitors to make sure conservation strategies are on the track. So this fact will provide for the needs of visitors to achieve visitor satisfaction and be able to provide full experience to visitors from programs, activities and facilities 
while at the same time we focusing on the conservation of the area to be protected from any damage. This allow visitors to see and learn about powerful expression of nature and culture as well as the importance of biodiversity protection and local culture. Ecotourism is nothing without programs, so there is product development that can be developed in SISFAC. It is consists of three product teams which are activities based on education, recreation and conservation that can meet customers' desires for tourism traveling. Education which has three amazing activities that can enhance visitors' tourism experience which is historical site compartment 14, bombing site effect, visiting someone village and also nature education. All these wonderful products will lead to concern about the natural environment in SISPEC on having ecotourism. Ecotourism products development also can be achieved with the strengths of its interpretation among the employees. Thus, to get skillful and professional employees, SISFAC ecotourism operators should organize employee training including volunteers and facilitators at least once in three months. SISFAC have a various of natural resources that can be used to develop the recreation activities. As we know, people nowadays are seeking for the natural setting in doing their leisure activities. In terms to fulfill visitors' wants and demand, SISFAC are provided the recreation products based on two categories which are active and passive activities. Active activities are a physical activity that requires the visitors to actively engage in authentic, mentally and physically challenging tasks. Some of the active activities that provided in this fact, such as catch the flag, blogging marathon, adventure, cycling racing, road gaining, obstacle course, bouncy jumping, water abseiling, and aqua therapy program. Meanwhile, passive activities are an outdoor recreation activity that involve relatively inactive or less energetic activities like bird race, river cafe, flora and fauna recognition, stargazing, except to the wilderness, climbing, canopy camping, and fish pedicure. Conservation is the act of protecting the natural resources from human activities such as logging and littering for the current and the future generations. As we hope to improve the SISFAC natural environment, water quality, wildlife attraction and increase wildlife habitat, the first program that is created is a two days one night tree planting volunteering program that is open for school, universities and corporate events. The basic necessities such as accommodation, foods, drinks and equipment is provided. The second program is a two days one night river colony volunteering program which came with the same terms as the tree planting program to raise awareness and educate people about water care, protect conserve and promote rivers and their biodiversity. Our third conservation program is Escape to the Wilderness. It is a two-day one-night backpacking program for people who want to be closer with nature where participants will go trekking and build a tent to stay overnight. They will be able to learn survival skills using equipment and how to train animals. The record of any sightings also can help us to keep track of our wildlife populations. Our last conservation program is open to the public which is a two-day one-night cultural heritage conservation program. Visitors can spend their time with the local or asli by staying in the house prepared by them to share and learn about their culture and heritage. However, the visitors need to follow multiple rules such as wearing appropriate attire and limited usage of mobile phones. We are identified to make cost estimation first on the actual and augmented product that will be developed in this fact and using two steps to allocate cost to get the total cost on both product to include the cost allocation into core product. The first step we do is to identify the cost per head of each augmented and actual product because it is need to spread when associating the cost. Then, after getting on the cost per product, we accumulate the cost of both actual and augmented product into the core product. It is to accumulate the cost easily with a big category where the cost will be spreadly divided based on the product cost. This is our cost estimation first product category, Adventure Tourism, which we divided into three core products. Then, we estimate the price per head of each activity in augmented and actual product to get the total price in all types of core products. So, 
the total price per head is 955 national ringgit. This is our cost estimation on our second product category which is Nature Tourism. We calculate price per head in every each activity of our actual and augmented products to get the total price per head to so total it in each core product type. The total price per head of all product types is 797 Malaysian Ringgit. In conclusion, ecotourism is a new form of long-term profitable natural protection process. It is also an effective tool that affects conservation efforts in many ways. The concept of combining conservation and ecotourism will bring benefits to all resources, agencies, local community and visitors including the physical benefits, social economic benefits and environmental benefits. So, let us start our dual responsibility with further research and development as well as systematic maintenance for leading CFAT to become a more successful ecotourism site.